requested a pirate-themed event, and we responded, as you wish. UWA Elite fans, I am the Dread Pirate Hale here for Gold Rush, and with me, as always, is... Oh, it's me! It's your boy, J.C. Scurry, in the house. It's always a treasure and a pleasure to call UWA Elite action. Speaking of treasure, it's on the line, as six men will be competing for a treasure chest in treasure chest turmoil. And next to me, as always, the Moby Dick to my Captain Ahab, UWA Elite Hall of Famer, Cypress. J.C., this is a family show, but anyway, on a night, where we play tribute to great pirates of history like Jack Sparrow, Captain Hook, Sean Parker from Napster, and the most honorable and honest pirate of all time, Barry Bonds. Wait, what? We have an action pack card. Let's go to the ring. The six-man treasure chest turmoil match. It will be scheduled for one fall, and the winner will claim the contents in the treasure chest.
the ring. On the line is a treasure chest. What's in it? None of us will know until we have a victim. We do know that it is one fall to a finish here. So the first, the first wrestler here to get a pinfall submission or any other form of victory is going to take that treasure chest home along with whatever is in it. Three men colliding, Corvus, Blade, and Powers. Blade on Wobbly Lake with a bulldog with a huge headbutt, sending Blade to the outside. I don't know about you guys, but the anticipation is killing me. I need to know what's in this treasure chest. What, what, what's in the box? I don't know. I'm getting 1990 Survivor Series vibes right now. Is it balloons? Is it the play date of the month? <laughs> in the cycle of handshakes, though, Bulldog Pittman trying to go for a pinfall as does Troy Locke now. Nearly had him there on the unique pinfall. Yeah, I like that maneuver by Troy Locke. Wilder going for a pinfall, Bulldog going for the backslide. Bulldog has him lined up though. With the flip over the back into the pinfall, and no. Just a carousel of pinfalls between three of these men. And Locke, Wilder, and Pittman showing, showing off what they can do. Showing those. Oh, but TJ Blade sweeping out Bulldog Pittman. Corvus doing the same, and so does Powers. Locke and to Wilder, respectively. Right now in the ring, we have got Eric Corvus and Troy Locke. Ooh, some vicious chops by the Matt Mechanic. You know, I'm ricking my mind trying to think of, like, what the worst thing could be if you're if you get that treasure chest. Like, imagine you go through this grueling match, you open it up, you win the treasure chest, and you get an 8 by 10 of MC Hell. <laughs> like, how awful. And, I mean, you can't put a price on that. Corvus went to the outside, but not before colliding with the back of Troy Locke. Yeah, Corvus using that uh, that crossbody attack that he likes to use going toward the outside. It just he went right oh, over. Wilder, oh, jumping to the outside, taking everyone out. But Troy Locke still remains on the street. A power is coming back into the ring. The Hollywood stuntman looks like he's lining up. Uh, looks like he's lining up Jungle Jim Wilder, maybe. Wilder and Corvus working over T.J. Blade. Up Powers. and over. Oh, they caught, caught him. Caught by Blaine, Corvus, and Locke. Oh, here comes Bulldog. Bulldog Pittman clearing the top rope. Bulldog Pittman taking out all competitors. Bulldog getting some air on that plancha. Bulldogs can fly. Who knew? Bulldog picking up Blade from the outside. A little bit of unfinished business between the two of these gentlemen. Blade trying to beg off of the attack. He's asking nicely, why does the Bulldog let him? Bulldog Pittman didn't forget about TJ Blade stealing his victory, and he can't wait to get his hands on him and see what is inside that treasure chest, but you gotta think that both men had their sights keen on each other. I wouldn't say he stole the victory, I just say he outsmarted him. And a huge spine buster! Planting TJ Blade in the center of the canvas, too. Nearly had him off that spine buster. TJ Blade, before this event, saying that uh, he was going to put the Bulldog down, but so far it's not looking uh, not looking like it's going TJ's way. Jungle Jim Wilder back in the ring now with Blade and Pittman. Forearm to the jaw of Pittman. Believe it or not, I was talking to TJ Blade earlier, moments before our show. On purpose? Uh, no, forcefully, actually. I don't believe it. I don't believe you. Kind of cornered me and said, I don't know why Bulldog has an obsession with me. Kind of scared me, to be honest with you. This is like a, the, the dark side of TJ Blade. Oh. The powers in Corvus Bulldog down. The crane kick. TJ made a mistake. He was laughing at Bulldog Pitt and took his eyes off from Jungle Jim Wilder. Bulldog just about got neutered there. <laughs> the Hollywood stuntman now going up against Jungle Jim Wilder. Oh, what a vicious forearm. Sends Wilder to the floor. Sent on splash by Powers. Now here comes Locke with a oh, the vicious diving clothesline. Corvus with a handful of the murder in the back. But Locke holds on. Big boot to Corvus. Smart maneuver by Troy Locke. Holding on to that top rope and then the T-bone. Oh, oh, right oh, on oh, his oh. head. Nearly snapped his neck. Too. Upset. Oh, I thought we might have had an upset victory there from Troy Locke. Troy Locke, man. 
coming onto the UWA roster during Fair Week at the Middlesex County Fair last year, improving himself at Mega Fight last month, giving him a shot in this six-man treasure chest turmoil match. There always seems to be a guy at the fair that comes out of nowhere and just seems to come onto his own in UWA Elite. Last year, or two years ago, was Flash Yeah, two Carter. years ago was Flash Carter. Huh? Maybe, maybe Troy Locke will be the guy from his past series. That would be an interesting matchup. Troy Locke and Bulldog. Flash Carter. And Bulldog and TJ Blade getting into it outside. As you said, TJ Blade skull into the steel post. Powers and Wilder fighting around the back of uh, the outside of the ring here also. Corvus, meanwhile, pulling Locke down and then a drop kick to the throne, Troy Locke. While they're getting Powers back in the ring, Bulldog doing the same with Blade. While Locke meets the turnbuckle. Four of the six competitors in the ring right now. You know what I just realized? This show is off to a great start. You know why? Why is that? James Hatton is in here. I mean, it, you're you're not wrong. He's not here. I, I don't know if I would so say it makes our broadcast better. You agree with me. You agree. Okay. I, I agree with... I agree with part of... Hey, you know what? I'm not going to do that. Now, Troy Locke on the shoulders of Corvus, and Powers on Blade's shoulders here. What? We, we got a chicken, a chicken fight. fight. A chicken fight in the center of the ring. Brings me back to my younger days. Jungle Jim Wilder! Everybody in the clothesline off the top! And a double clothesline, all competitors are down in the ring. A whole lot of bad intentions from those clotheslines from Wilder and Pittman. Just carnage bodies all around the ring right now. All it takes is one man to throw an arm over, get that three count, take that treasure chest, and whatever, whatever it, lays inside of it. It's just crazy because nobody even knows what's in there. And that was a gear shift right to the face of Tyler Locke. Corb is going for another one. Troy Locke, what am I saying? Jungle Jim Wilder able to duck it and get a, a roundhouse kick. Discus forearm from TJ Blade takes out Wilder and then a drop kick to the ankle. You know, Cypress, I'm with you. I have my eyes on the treasure chest. That's why I'm messing. And now look, on the attack of powers. Never, it out. I'll never tell you you're with me again. The double stomp by Powers. And then the super kick by Bulldog Pittman. Pittman the only man standing right now. Crowd getting behind Bulldog Pittman. And then Corvus mocking Pittman. Oh, just a slap to the face. Something tells me he didn't want to do that. Normally I'd say you poke the bear, but what is that? Oh, oh, the oh, shot oh, collar. Shot collar. To Corvus. Payback for the mockery, but TJ Blade breaking it up. You gotta be aware of where every other opponent is in the ring. And that was wasted by TJ Blade. That double arm underhook DDT. Troy Locke. Oh, with the heel. Right to the back of Locke's head. That might be the most vicious I've ever seen that move. <laughs> that, that front face buster. Wilder with the pinfall on Powers. Bulldog Pittman breaking it up. Misses on the clothesline. Misses with the speed back again. The Cutter from Bulldog. The leaping cutter, and then TJ Blade. Oh, just, oh wait, oh, wait the six a repeat runner. of last time. Bulldog Pittman was quick to think better of it. And now TJ Blade, begging for mercy, doesn't know what's going to come next. Yeah, he's not going to get any mercy from Bulldog Pittman. Big left hand from TJ Blade. Oh, oh, no. oh, oh, Blade jumping in. Corvus kicked. The Bulldog smartest Pittman. thing that TJ Blade has ever done. Zero oh. machine. One, two, three. Oh, and what a way to kick off UWA Elite's gold rush. Unbelievable opening match up here. Oh, you know what the best part is? Now we get to see what's in the chest. What lies underneath the treasure chest? That mechanic, Eric Corvus, by way of Zero Machine, winning his way into dot dot dot. 
what is it going to be? Is it a championship opportunity? Is it a chance to, to book UWA Elite for an event? Maybe end up in the main event tonight. Who knows, maybe we'll see a triple threat. What could it be? Corp is just shoving our cameraman Bose. He's excited. He's excited about it. Let's see what it is. And Ladies and gentlemen, my championship match is an I championship title shot at aggression. Well, he wanted gold, and now he has an opportunity for some. Eric Corvus, the Matt Mechanic, with an I championship opportunity. Is it going to be Joey Adams? Is it going to be Flash Carter? We are going to find out a little bit later on tonight. Coming up next, unfortunately, we have to deal with Nicholas K. Associates. Ty Thomas is going to let us know his plans for the Golden Ticket briefcase. Let's see how he won that Golden Ticket. Let's go back to setting the standard with your UWA Elite Rewind. Be sure to follow UWA Elite on social media to keep yourself updated on everything UWA Elite. Want to be a member of the UWA Elite Army? You can follow UWA Elite on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok today so you don't miss out on any of the latest UWA Elite news and announcements. Celebrate your birthday with the UWA Elite All-Stars with the all-new UWA Elite Birthday Bash Packages. Get early access to a UWA Elite event, exclusive pre-show meet and greets, and priority seating to a UWA Elite Supercar. Availability is limited. Head over to UWAElite.com for more information to make your birthday party legendary. And here comes Nicholas K. Climbing the ladder. The fighting oh, queen. Oh, she has no business Entering the ring and... Taking K off the ladder. What are you doing? Oh, I hope he Hey, get your hands off her. She's in the ring. She deserves what she gets. Heather just smacking Nick K, who sends her out to ringside. Climbing for, the ladder. Oh, looking for a second wants briefcase this. in two. In nobody years. wants this. His second briefcase in three years. Here it is, King Tech. And he's got hands on trying to unhook it from the chain. Watch out for Ty Thomas. Ty Thomas in the corner lining up that ladder. No! It's King Tech! Wait, no, no, no! Ryan T is not paying any attention. Ryan T did not see it. Nicholas K distracted him. Wait, what? Wait, no, 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 no! no, no. Yes, yes, what? yes! King Tech had the briefcase. What this a is genius. absolutely disgraceful. Can we just take a second and talk of the genius that is Nicholas K? What a genius Here's that man down. is. Unbelievable. King Tech just got victory stolen right out of his hands. More importantly, no, he no. got a guaranteed championship opportunity. Are you Ripped kidding me? Right he got, he got outsmarted. He brings Outsmart. a woman to the ring, and that was his mistake. Ty yeah. Thomas brings a mastermind, and that was the difference tonight.
to this day when you're Ty Thomas, when you are BC4 every night is a good night. And I'm going to come right to this chase because I know that there has been a lot of talk and a lot of questions about this. About this golden ticket briefcase and what it means. Everyone asks, oh, but Nicholas K, Ty Thomas, and BT Bull, is he going to cash in on BT Bull? How does that work? Oh, you like that? You would like to see Ty Thomas cash in on that? Right now? No, not going to happen. Because you see, as long as we control this, it's not a risk to lose BT Bowl Championship. You see, the truth is, bro, they care. They care. Because everyone wants to see you lose that, but they won't. Because without that in play, with it in our control, it's not a threat to you at all. So you want to tell them the plan goal, the overall plan, what we do with that free race? You want to tell them? Yes! Yes! Okay. 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 Equal opportunities, oh my guys, would you like to tell them? Silent type, apparently. Like Nicholas K said, I'm going to talk right to the chase because that's what you guys want, right? You want to know what our plan is, what we've talked about doing with the golden ticket, right? Yes. So you're going to find out because tonight the plan goes into effect. Tonight I am cashing in the golden ticket. And I am cashing the golden ticket in on the UWA Elite. Heavyweight champion! What? Wait, what? No way! Yeah. Is Ty is this Thomas really happening right now? He's yeah. oh, no, no, no. a double cross? You guys fell right into the trap. Right into the trap. You think Corey Dillinger's your only problem tonight? No, 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 no. You gotta make it Corey Dillinger first. Here you go, Rich. Ryan, where are you at? Ryan! Oh. Calling for Rich Ryan T. This is a. It's got to be official. I have never been happier to be wrong in my entire life. Ty Thomas. Ty Thomas with the double reverse. Breaking away from K Associates. Going okay. back to the UWA Elite Championship. All right, all right, all right. Don't play the new jersey. This spare of the moment match is scheduled for one ball and for the UWA Elite all right, let's go tie. If the bell rings, it's a big first, the challenger. He is a wrestling out of Tuckerton, New Jersey. He is the professional, professional wrestler, truly terrific. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Why wouldn't I? We've got ourselves a championship match. BT Bull against the golden ticket briefcase holder, Ty Thomas, cashing in. Take, wait, no. Taking his. Oh, wait no, a minute. No, uh, no, no. Ty. Tell me this is a joke. You son. Two. No. Don't. Don't. Are you kidding me? Oh, I should have known. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the match. I can't I agree with a lot of things that Nicholas Cage is a so intense dude. I don't know if that's a smart move. I, I, no words. No words. Oh, I, gentlemen, uh, President James Swan, uh, oh, oh, grabbing oh, the mic. Oh, oh. Oh. Ryan, Ryan, that match does not count. That cash in does not count. You can never take that. No, shut up. Whoa. <laughs> 
you want to disrespect that briefcase, you want to disrespect that championship, you want to disrespect everybody in the back, well, I'll tell you what's going to happen. Since you are so determined to get rid of that briefcase, I'm going to give you the opportunity. Because from this moment forward, that briefcase will be defended exactly like any other, every other UWA Elite Championship here. Every match you have, that briefcase is going to be on the line. Oh my goodness. And you lose, that person gets the briefcase. There you go. There you have it. The boss delivering the punishment. The boss had some bass in his voice. And Ty, that starts right now. Former Iron Man champion joining us here at commentary, Lucas Whitaker. I couldn't stay away. King Tech here to answer the call. King Tech is back in. Oh, he's limping. He's, he's limping. Oh. Still hurt from that recovering injury courtesy of K Associates. He's faking. I hope he is. Wow. The king needs to be 100% if he's going to win that. Yeah, he's win that not. He looks like he's in good shape. I'd strongly advise uh, against this matchup. I don't think he should go forward with this. I think the king is one of the most untrustworthy people in the ring right now. He would. I mean. Anytime you have a championship opportunity, you, you've got to take it, injury or not. I think that's what's going through King Tech's mind. But the King's got heart right now because he's fighting for vengeance from the Queen. Yes, uh, he has to fight for we, what they do we, to the Queen. we got to mention, yeah. Uh, Noticeable in her absence, Queen Heather, the fighting Queen, is uh, still recovering. Still yeah. recovering, yeah. So King Tech being a trained wow. professional How wrestler. How tragic that is. Yeah, King Tech being a trained professional wrestler. Yeah. She, she, she shoved him to the staircase. My K associate, so I, I, I totally understand him. He's, he's okay! He's taking off the knee. Alright, right, he's unwrapping the knee. I was just going to say the same thing. So yeah. King, King Tech see, yeah. able to the injured knee is tied up tight. Able to recover enough for the match. Obviously, uh, Queen Heather not yeah, able to recover quite, quite as much. All right, so the golden ticket is on the line. This is effectively a championship match. Dave Swan uh, letting all participants know that the golden ticket briefcase needs to be defended exactly the same way that all of our championship uh, belts do. Which makes sense, it's a championship opportunity. Well, here's the thing now, does the golden ticket briefcase make it a more sought after prize? Possibly, I mean, you can use it to challenge for any title, so you're not locked down to one in particular opponent, and it keeps your opponents guessing also. Let's try this again! This match will be scheduled for a full one fall, and it will be for the UWA Elite Golden Ticket! Introducing first, the challenger, who is playing for the fields of Gettysburg. He is the co-leader of the UWA Agony from the injured knee. 
I, I couldn't wait another month. I gotta say, I, I really disagree with him going forward and competing right now. I, I don't like his chances. I, I disagree. I, I, again, I'm gonna say, anytime that there's a, a title championship on the line, you gotta go for it. You, you don't know when that next chance is gonna come around. Wait a minute. Oh, my, oh wait a minute. Oh, I knew it. He's he standing up, he and he looks like. He looks like he's fine. Like a phoenix from the ashes, King Tech. Oh my goodness. And Tech on the what attack. He called the bluff. Tech is medically cleared and fully recovered. Let's and he's shattered it. right now. Pitfall. Walks up the arms going for another The crucifix X. bomb. Oh. And that speed is back to 100% on King Tech. Laying in those chops into Ty's chest. <laughs> King Tech pulling the ultimate swerve, using K Associates tactics against them. So many shots. But just how will he fare without the fighting queen at ringside? She's usually there to help even the odds. Well, he's got the entire UWE army, isn't that what it's like for him? They're always with him. Did you hear uh, Rich Reed's disclaimer at the beginning of the show? Who's retreating? Anyway. Ty Thomas looking, uh, looking to retreat a little bit from the attack of King Tech. Tech can't let his breath out there. He's got to be on the attack. Well, especially now with uh, Nicholas K over there, you're going to have to go through him also in order to get a Ty Thomas. You know Nick K is going to jump in the way of any attack. Correct, correct. But the one advantage you have is Nicholas K will not spill his beer. Fair point, fair point. It is, it is his Achilles heel. Now, Tech chasing after Ty Thomas in the audience there. Has him by the hair. Oh, oh! And that's got to be revenge for the fighting queen. Into the ring steps that injured King Tech's knee just six weeks ago. I gotta say, though, I did make Nick Cage spill his beer when I gave him a stone face. <laughs> that is correct. That is correct. He did spill it. He doesn't spill it on his own, but. Oh, yeah, a little, a little extra encouragement. Maybe. We gotta think for King Tech. This means everything to him. Revenge for the Fighting Queen. Revenge for the injured knee. Taking the fight to the first row. Revenge because Ty Thomas made me applaud for him. <laughs> you idiot! <laughs> you're so dumb. I, I fell for it too. I well, we know you're dumb. I know better than to believe anything. Me and, me and Lucas over here, we do the job. I didn't say that you're dumb, but you might have been you know, an overthought. Before you introduced the greatest Iron Man champion of all time, he did say this has got to be a bluff. So I'm going to you know, give Lucas a are, are, are we going back to, to uh, brown nosing Lucas again? Are we, are we picking my, up where we, where we left off at Mega Fight? He's one of my closest friends. Yeah, okay. You know, you're very lucky I haven't heard any of your previous commentary, so I have to take you at your word. You don't need to. You don't need to. No, are you sure? Yeah. 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 If you want to hear that commentary, I think you can get on the UWA Elite Network. It's all there for you to hear and see. For $9.99? $6.99, even better. And your first week is free if you're a new subscriber. Go to UWAElite.com. Team Tech there jumping with the forearm right to the head of Ty Thomas. Unraveling. Unraveling the knee. I wonder if that ace bandage is going to... Come into oh no, he's getting rid of it. I don't know if that's a good idea. Yeah, you should, you should choke him with it. Yeah, you know if, if Ty or Nick K had uh, had a hand of, had, had yeah got their hands on that ace bandage. I'll get there, don't worry. Got their hands on that ace bandage, they'd be using it themselves. Thomas dragged back into the ring. We kicking out the legs. Nick K climbing up onto the apron. Oh, Tech has hands on the briefcase. Oh no! And a little bit of cat and mouse uh, with Nicholas K on the outside. King Tech just grabbing that briefcase, stalking Nicholas K. I'm, I'm kind of sad that King Tech didn't get a chance to use that briefcase while Ryan T's back was turned. Oh, I thought you were going to say you were sad because Nicholas K. Left. I'm happy. He's gone. 
Some people make me happy when they arrive into the room. Some people make me happy. Oh, 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 oh. Ty Thomas oh. kicking the rope, sending it into a terrible place from Jim Zach. But it should. Short arm clothesline by Ty. And here comes Kay right back out from backstage. Ty Thomas just laying the, bit, the fists into King Tech. I don't think it was King Tech. I think he needed a refill. Here's the thing, though. I, I will tell you that while Nicholas K isn't paying attention, I, I sneak some sips of his special beers that he has. And, and, and how are they? They're terrible. Really? They're awful. He has an awful taste in beer. So the rumors of the expensive liquor and everything is just... Oh, they might cost a lot, but they taste like garbage. Well, don't forget, he also told us that champagne bottle was worth a thousand dollars. Yeah, the one that had a bunch of confetti, confetti in it. In his face. It was very expensive confetti. Expensive confetti. I heard, I heard it was made of gold. It's like jumbo shrimp. Like little pieces of gold are in there. Oh, oh and there goes Nick, Nick K shot. with a big right hand. I, mean, I didn't. I was talking to Luke what happened. Oh, you, you didn't you didn't notice the interference by Nicholas K. I'm shocked. Shot right to the kidneys. Here it comes. Good shot. shot by Ty. A right hand and then another chop. A right hand and another chop. King Tech with a head of steam. Oh! With a big boot. That was to the jaw if I ever seen one. I wouldn't be surprised if we lost some teeth after that one. Kicks out at two. The people of the WWE will seem to be behind King Tech for this match. Golden ticket briefcase on the line. A guaranteed championship match of your choosing. You know, i, I got to point out, I think Luke has touched on something earlier that's very important that he's talking about. Uh -huh. I wonder if that golden ticket is going to be more prestigious. People are going to be lining up to take on Ty Thomas now. Because you can, it's not only you can cash in whenever you want, you can cash in whenever you want. The side slam by Ty Thomas. I think Dave Swan making his choice has really made a difference to this golden ticket. It was prestigious before, now it's, it's, it's more prestigious. It's just a nice little tight breeze tonight. You can cash in tonight. It's an opportunity every UWA elite roster member longs for. Ty sending Tech all the way across the ring, going hard into the turnbuckle. Well, I mean, not every roster member, because Ty Thomas tried to give it away. I mean, if he doesn't want it, I'm sure there's plenty of people in that locker room. If it's still available when I get better, right? There might be something to shoot for. Well, you do have some history with Ty Thomas. Into the turnbuckle of the back. That's going to be an extreme pain right now for Ty Thomas. Oh, the technicality. Technicality sending Ty back into the corner. Going for the monkey flip. No. Block. Caught. Block. Oh, my goodness. Transitioning. Suplex position. I've never seen such strength from Ty. Show of strength by Ty Thomas. Oh, Tech kicks oh, out. Two and three, three quarters for Tech Ty Thomas. kicks out. I thought that was good. And I apologize to King Tech. That was the technical knockout, not the technicality. Of course you can. If you want to leave and go apologize to him now, you got this. You got this. Um, I'll pass, but I appreciate the, gen uh, the generous offer. Listen, when there's name-based moves, I gotta get it can right. get confused. Yeah. Getting back on his feet in a unique way. Going for the t shirt of Bulldog. Oh Lands it! He hits it. Ty is down and out. This could be it. Tech is actually grabbing his left knee, though. One, two. <laughs> wait a minute. What is, wait a minute. Nick, what just happened? Nick K. K. Nick K shoved the briefcase under the hand of Ryan was, T. He wasn't able to complete the freak out. That was the greatest thing I've ever seen because oh I hurt Ryan T's hand. I mean, Brilliant in its simplicity. Ryan and now, right Nicholas K ejected from rings up. Ryan T is my new favorite person. 
said nobody ever. I think, I think referee Ryan too might have hurt his hand there too. Yeah, I don't hope so. You get tendonitis hitting something like that. Wait the, oh. oh, and the golden ticket being used as a weapon. Wait, he's disqualified. King disqualification. King, King Tech gets the briefcase. Well, he just threw it away. Not what if it's like a title match. He's right, he's right. Do championships change hands on disqualification? No, they don't. Are you Referee, give that briefcase back to its rightful owner. I mean, he, are you kidding me? And this is the biggest technicality. Pun intended. I was going to say, it's really good. It's pun intended, but. Go ahead, make your announcement. Go talk to Jaden and make your announcement. I called it right away. I don't know why you guys didn't see it. Ladies and gentlemen, Rick Swan pulled out his glasses as Curtis Dave Swan said, the golden ticket is to be defended like the championship, and as we all know, a champion cannot change hands. Oh, oh Bull! BT Bull from the back. I didn't see that coming. Ambushing King Tech. I knew they were Tech. Oh, my goodness. That's going to be a whiplash. Oh, a lifetime opportunity ripped away from King Tech. And now, Kenny Associates teaming up and mauling. I must say, I, I have less level. respect for BT Bull now that he's won the championship and switched to more Hawaiian shirts instead of, instead of these oh. Oh, the bulldozer. suits. But well, he's in vacation. Bulldozer from BT Bull. Ladies and gentlemen, Ty Thomas is still your golden ticket holder. Wow. Despite the disqualification, still the golden ticket briefcase holder. Truly terrific. Uh, good as gold, insurance, whatever, whatever. And Ty now Thomas. with this new rule, possibly the most. He's got a target on his He's back. He's got a target. He's got a bullseye on his back, on his face, for that golden ticket briefcase. Some would say it's better because they don't have to go through a ladder match to get it. A great point. For the second time in six weeks, Ty, Th uh, Ty Thomas running to the back as King Tech is going to need a little bit of assistance, battered and broken, getting back to the locker room. Folks, don't forget to join the UWA Elite Network, $6.99 a month. And for new subscribers, your first week is free. It is indeed. You get to see every single match in UWA Elite history. Go to uwaelite.com right now. Relive every UWA Elite Supercard in history from the comfort of your own home with the UWA Elite Network. Featuring over 200 videos and over 26,000 minutes of exclusive footage from over 10 years of UWA Elite media that you can't get anywhere else. Plus must-see events from over a dozen other promotions and all for only $6.99 a month. Head over to uwaelite.com to join today where new subscribers get their first week free. So, my gold rush, I think, why don't, why don't we do an open challenge to any team? Anybody, you know, any team that wants to put their name in and come on out at Gold Rush and try to do something that no other team has been able to do so far and beat the Just Us League. The challenge has been issued. Go ahead and answer it. I mean, we're definitely gonna go our separate ways. No, hold on, hold on. Hold on. What? Can you hear me out? We were gonna go our separate ways, but I don't know if you heard, 
Justice League just issued an open challenge for their tag team belts at Gold Rush. And clearly, we don't have anything to do at Gold Rush anymore. So what do you think? Alright, you know what? You have a point. I'll meet you halfway. There's a lot we can learn from each other. Clearly, starting with this. But let's, let's just do this, right? Tag team? Tag team. Let's do it. Yeah, let's Gold Rush, baby. Gold Rush. <laughs> Dude, did, did you hear about Justice League? Yeah. Yeah, they, what do you mean, yeah? They, they set up an open challenge. Yeah. Like somebody already said. Yeah, and? We can't face them again for the title. No, no, no. Don't worry about it, dude, don't worry about it. What do you mean, don't listen, worry about it, bro? Listen, we listen to me. I talked to our lawyer friend, okay? They told me to check the fine print. What, what does that mean, check the fine print? Justice League never said that only one team could accept. You know what I'm saying? Are you saying... Ah! <laughs> ah, yeah! You're a smart boy! Yep. Yeah, Thank you. so you're Thank saying... You. It's our lawyer friend. saying our lawyer friend. Also accept. I'm saying we also accept. I'll see you there, buddy. We also accept. Yep. I'll see you at Gold Rush, bro. I'll see you. Oh.
Introducing challenging team the number one, the team of the J. Six men in a weird chain block here. Lost, lost boy, no, even promise, uh, Ethan promise rather, sorry. And Anthony Michael throwing people around. It's a common mistake is Ethan's a stupid man. How will they? Promise, promise and Michael here. working things out here. No. Oh, sweeping out the ankles, landing face first into the mat. Neither one exactly trustworthy compared to the other. <laughs> Looks like he's got a rocket in his shorts. He's a high-flying guy if you've ever seen one. <laughs> You're right, JC. I am. All right. I am. Judy Underwood jumping on the Steeler. Ethan Promise taking out Jay the Key and Eddie Thomas. The cannonball from Promise. Mushroom stomp from Junie Underwood. The crowd here is getting pumped up. Anthony Michael's not so sure about it though. Tag team action going at 100 miles an hour. Don't ever. Promise over the back of Michael. And a kick bouncing Michael off the ropes. Huge drop kick by Promise. In comes Underwood. Junie Underwood up to the top. Chris Steeler. Steeler sending. Sending promise out, trying to get uh, trying to get up to Underwood. Underwood fighting the good fight here. Oh, oh, oh field goal kick 
from Anthony Michael. Right into the lower midsection of Underwood. The extremely low midsection. Steeler tagged in. It's the, I think that might be the first legal tag we've seen this entire match. Ooh, it's stomping on the knuckles. And Jay the Key Evans on the back of Underwood. Evans and Steeler teaming up here. Oh. Oh. No reason for that. Just, just no reason for that. Evans. He, kicked him, he kicked him in the inner thigh. I, I mean, I, I guess. Oh, big wind up, big wind up. Oh. And if the boys weren't lost before, they might be lost now. That, that was that hurts just a lot. Are we doing this again now? Underwood in a really bad spot. Well, I mean, it's a triple threat. There's no DQ. Yeah, drop kick, make a wish. You know, I think I've seen something similar to this on an old MTV show. It was called Jack something. I just can't remember. <laughs> Was that one of the ones that Johnny Strong was on? Yeah, you know what? I, I, might, might be. I, I might be. <laughs> All right, another. Why is, well, why is Ryan teasing a lot of everyone in the ring? They do. They, 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 what's happening? I mean, it, it is a triple threat. I, there's no disqualifications. I guess. I guess you can count the tag teams out, but you're not going to disqualify them. Shot running up the chest. Underwood in an extremely bad way right now. Junie's close to his corner here. Not able to get the tag quite yet. Steeler and Evans continuing to work the young man over. And we're now Underwood getting back into the fight. Signs of life. Knee underneath the jaw. How is he able to jump after all of the damage done to... Whoa. Steeler putting an end to that. I was going to say, you were saying... He couldn't jump. Steeler just gave him a little boost. Not the kind of assist you uh, you generally want to have. Underwood still in a bad shape, showing signs of life, but getting it beaten right back out of him. The same three men in the ring for quite some time now. Oh, double DDT! Underwood's got a long way to go to get the promise. The Promise with a handful of that uh, tag rope finally able to get the tag, and in comes Ethan Promise. Promise now going from corner to corner. Huge elbows, and then, oh, big discus lariat from Chris Steeler. Most boys just seem overmatched in this game. Both men making the tag now. Eddie Thomas and Anthony Michael, the legal man for their team. Are they going to be working together the same way that Evans and Steeler did? Looks like it so far. Just choking out Promise on that middle rope. Anthony Michael making friends as usual. Oh! <laughs> Thunderous and shock. You can hear it from all the way outside of the building. Holy buckets. I mean, I, I got to give that one to Eddie Thomas if, I mean, if we're going by reverb. He's Eddie Thomas. Chris Steeler getting one in. Why not? Eddie Thomas placing Promise. Yeah, Promise got, Promise got slingshotted across the ring. And uh, Eddie Thomas making sure he got racked right back up in that corner. We got celebrations going on from both the Justice League and Evans and Thomas. But I mean, even if they take out the Lost Boys, they've still got to face each other. Only one only one team is winning this title. Well, you just worry about that when you get there. I guess. Eddie Thomas collided with Judy Underwood, sending him back to the floor. Oh! oh, oh, oh. A vicious oh, DDT from Anthony Michael. Oh, 
Anthony Michael. Any Thomas tried capitalizing. Unreal. That that is. You know, I've I've been in I've worked professional wrestling for 15 years, and that is one of the most vicious maneuvers I have ever seen. Good grief. The fact that he's still standing is a blessing. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm barely even, to call, even able to call the action, and, and Ethan Promise and they're having to take this punishment. I mean, it's essentially a handicap. Just call it what it is. Pretty much. Junie Underwood still on the outside, still not able to make his way up to the apron yet. Oh, and the knee, hitting him right on the chin. All right, and so it begins. Back and forth now between Jay the Key Evans and Chris Steeler. It's Cochina for Italian. What are you throwing? Italians are stupid. Oh. Uh, not a good thing to say in New Jersey, Chris Steeler. Well, a little bit of uh, an Irish Italian night going on here. As Steeler and Evans exchanging blows. We got a tag. Finally, Promise brings in Underwood. They took their eyes off Ethan Promise, and he was able to make the tag. Underwood with a couple of knee lifts, a couple of kicks. You know, Lost Boys may be able to steal this one. Evans just staggers his way into the corner. Eddie Thomas legal now in the ring. Promise with that drop toe hold, sending Eddie Thomas into, uh, into Anthony Michael, and then a drop kick. Two for the price of one, and another for Anthony Michael. For someone who's getting the living daylights beaten out of him about five minutes ago, Promise has recovered very, very nicely. Meanwhile, Underwood putting Chris Steeler in a vulnerable position. Well, but they, maybe a little revenge. Wait a minute. Same goes for Jay the Key Evans. And it looks like Promise They're setting doing up the same Michael. To Anthony Michael and now for Eddie Thomas. The ultimate revenge! Oh! Oh, oh, oh. oh Jay Evans about three inches taller. Oh. Anthony Michael making him not to do it. Have mercy. For the sake of the family lineage. Prom Promise grabbing onto the ankles, making sure that Anthony Michael can't avoid. Oh, three points. The Lost Boys are nuts. <laughs> I see what you did there. Family show. Steeler and Promise in the ring. Steeler oh, with the springboard cutter. And Steeler missed with one leg on that. That was all muscle that Chris Steeler was able to get that springboard and recover. No, I'm usually up on these sort of things, but I have no idea who the legal men are. Cutter sending Junie Underwood to the outside. The detonator from Eddie Thomas. Look for eighth and promise. Huge crossbody. The springboard crossbody. Jay Evans lining him up. For all future, no! Evans puts him to sleep. We see the same for Steeler. Nope, caught the knee. Big double team maneuver there. The Just Us League looking to continue their title reign, no. Michael had to roll really over to get Jay Evans there, and that might have cost him it, it had enough time for Eddie Thomas and Judy Underwood to break up the pit. Let's go, Lost Boys chant here in South River. But look behind you, the Justice League lining up the Lost Boys, pair of super kicks. Nobody home. Oh. The Lost Boys taking care of business. Most of Eddie Thomas entering the fray once more. Eddie Thomas trying a two-on-one, not able to get it done, however. The Lost Boys lining up Thomas. Oh! One, two, three! Oh my goodness! The Lost Boys taking Eddie Thomas to Wonderland. 
Thomas and the Just Us League, the four of them all trying to place blame, trying to figure out exactly what happened, exactly where things went wrong. Despite their best efforts, Juni Underwood, Eighth and Promise, the Lost Boys, your new UWA Elite Tag Team Champions. UWA Elite fans, we will be returning to the South River VFW, the UWA Elite Army Base on June 17th. Get your tickets right now for aggression. Head to UWAElite.com. Choke slam by KTB UWA Elite Championship. Oh, and just tossing it on the back of Vertigo. Root in board. Oh, Vertigo! Oh, oh my God! Vertigo up on his shoulders on the second. Oh my God! Just tossing Vertigo down like a bad habit. Oh no! Keep going. Oh, there it is. The they kicked the, the, the last time out. this happened, we know what happened. It, it is. It is KCB. And the referee is out. Oh. And that bag of bones to the injured midsection of Vertigo. KCB is going to cost him the championship. Oh, my gosh. Right on his head. Here the cover. One, two, three. New UWA Elite Champion. All these bad things have been happening to me is because of Kyle the Beast. And I don't know when, and I don't know where. But I'ma get mine. Kyle, you cost me everything. You did all of this. But as long as I'm still breathing, you messed up. And whenever I come back, you're finished. Is it a time on the stairs? Talking is dead ass done. 
because now it's the time for violence and throwing hands. Because at setting the standard, I'm putting an end to you. K. T. B. That's, a, that's the we, 10 we, count. That's the end of the match. I, the, it's a double count out. What? Oh, I think that's oh, the oh, oh. Right in the nether regions. KTB telling, telling Swan this is, this is his match. Whoa! Whoa, and Vertigo! <laughs> just, oh, that was great! Dave Swan right across the face! <laughs> I mean, obviously, Vertigo going for KTB. Oh, Vertigo, no! I right know! And KTB! Oh, I love it! With the yes. good check to the yes. abdomen of President Dave Swan! Like oh. Both of you are suspended indefinitely! What? Effective immediately! Get in the back! What happened to Dave Swan? I just, I mean, I tried to apologize. I, I, just, I just don't know what to really do. I, 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 oh my God! Ah, ah. Here we go. Vertigo, wait, wait a minute. Are you, are you kidding me? Oh boy. This is about to pick that, up here. That's the beast music. Vertigo's Vertigo distracted. Wait, one, two, two, two. three. Oh Deep no! With a handful of tights. After I was suspended and I was done with KTV, I was done to that rat bastard Kyle. But he wanted to step his nose in my business. Kyle! You want to step your nose in my business? You weren't even here today because you're afraid of me. You've always been afraid of me. And this takes the cake. You want to cost me championship matches? You want to cost me days that I've worked my whole life for? Then in two weeks! Two weeks, Kyle. It's gonna be you and me one more time, one on one. And I don't care. Max Dave Swan, whatever match you want, whether it's no disqualifications, whether it's a street fight, I don't care. I'm putting my Tims on, and I'm meeting you in the concrete jungle. <laughs> To the ring post goes the king of the barons. You know, we all sat here at the Middlesex County Fair and we saw what happened there, what these two guys did to each other. I'm terrified to see what they're going to do to each other tonight. And this all started back last June when we saw that bag of animal bones. 
living on the edge. Followed quickly by KTB ambushing Matt Vertigo. This is a rivalry that has been a year long span. And it all has come down to this moment. A false count anywhere, no DQ. As you mentioned, Cypress, that match at Crossroads, nominee for match of the year, for OMG move of the year. I mean, there, there is just, it, it's just been violence. It's been violence, it's been ambushes, it's been injuries, and it's just a whole lot of bad Sus blood. Suspensions. Indeed, yes, yeah, suspensions for both of them. It is one of the best parts of the whole rivalry. Are you, are you saying that just because Dave Swan got hit in the face? Oh, I would never say that. But I, I sounds like you did. Playing the odds. Where to go now? Continuing the attack, getting KTB back into the ring. Where to go? Looking under the ring for some further implements of destruction. We say KTB has unleashed this mean streak and aggressive side of Vertigo that we've never seen in the WWE. And a steel a chair has been taken from underneath the ring in the hands of the New York Drip. Much to the delight of the crowd. Oh! Stomping KTB's hand into the steel chair. This rivalry, it started out over the UWA League Championship, and it's, it, it's almost like bigger than that right now. Vertigo looks like he's looking for a pedigree to put KTB down onto that chair. KTB able to backdrop him and picks up the chair for himself. Oh! And a strike right to the gut with the steel chair. Oh, and a hit over the back. I think I saw the chair dent while it struck the back. Continuing to dent, but continuing to break the body of the New York Drip. KTB now setting up the chair in between the first and second turnbuckles. It is wedged in between both ropes. What could he be thinking here? On the shoulders goes Matt Vertigo. It's not a door, but it'll work. Oh. He should be able to stop himself. Yeah, Vertigo slams on the brakes, and then a couple of quick shots, and then a right uppercut. Oh, but Vertigo caught. Exploder from KTB. Sends Vertigo almost out of the ring. A baseball slide, sliding Matt Vertigo to ringside. I've done many a ring crew, and that's what he's doing. Yeah. I mean, the only time we've seen KTB do this before is when some tables are coming into the ring. Knowing KTB, I, I, I don't even know if that's if that's going to be the end of it. We've seen him use sledgehammers in the past. Obviously, that bag of animal bones that we alluded to earlier. Oh. And that Virgil's face slammed right onto the apron. Hardest part of the ring. It's been a while since I said that. Meanwhile, back at the ranch. <laughs> You got that one from Cypress. Yeah. KTB now just using the turnbuckle pad. And, and believe me, folks, that padding is, offers almost no protection. That is a steel hook underneath. Yeah, those are steel cables and steel hooks inside those uh, well, we, inside those We ropes call it a pad because it looks like a pad, but it's not really <laughs> It hurts. Yeah. It, my head slammed it. It, oh, it's better than slamming your head into bare metal, but just barely. Oh, now KTB. Grabbing the roof around the neck of Matt Vertigo. The crowd here chanting for Vertigo to break this choke somehow. I mean, does KTB want to win this way with, with a tap out? I just think he lives to make Matt Vertigo suffer. That's that's what I'm thinking. Is KTB's going to be looking to do a little bit more damage? I think he's doing a lot of damage right I, now. Yeah, I think you're right. Oh, 
Oh, Vertigo trying to get his feet underneath him. I would say the winner of this match has got to move up the ranks and be in line for a title shot, but I don't think either one of these guys cares about that. No. If, if we had a hardcore title in UWA Elite, possibly, Absolutely. this would send them shooting up the ranks to that. Oh, and now Vertigo dropping the ringside, and that's terrible positioning for his neck as it is still trapped into that cable rope. Vertigo essentially hanging himself on that uh, on that bottom oh, on that bottom rope. Finally, Vertigo able to break his way free. I think he got the, uh, the metal that was attached to the armbar uh, there. ATG took it off and threw it on the ground. I think Vertigo actually got, got a hold of it. Vertigo still trying to get to his feet. Trying to get his way back into the ring. KTB rising to his feet. Caught KTB by the neck. Huge choke slam. Vertigo goes down with him. One, two, and no. Vertigo putting all of his weight onto KTB, but KTB still able to kick out somehow at two and a half. Vertigo looking to get the crowd here in South River behind him. KTB has rolled out of the ring. Is Vertigo gonna fly? Oh! KTB, yeah, it looks like he has a steel rod in his hand. Steel rod that cracked Matt Vertigo in the skull. And now in a suplex position. KTB just carrying Vertigo around the ring. Oh! Rim cage right into the staircase. Yeah, and the way that Vertigo slingshotted over those stairs. That, that could have broken a couple of ribs on the way also. Followed by a big boot right to the side of the temple. Right, Vertigo pinfall. looks down and out. This could be it. Two. Two, Two count still. Able to get the shoulder up just before the count of three. Remember, falls count anywhere. This is perfectly legal, folks. KTB. Yeah. In the first order of accurate. Calling for a chair. Suplex coming from KTB. No, Vertigo catches himself. He's able to reverse it. Sends KTB right into the stairs. And again. And the ring post. Vertigo, I mean, just no technique at all. Just shoving KTB. You can just feel the intensity in this room. Still a two count only. Vertigo diving in for that cover, remembering that there is an actual match going on here. This yeah. isn't just two men beating each other. The amount of hate that these two competitors have for each other. As I said, a year-long span. I know aggression is next month, but the aggression is being shown here in both competitors' faces. They will stop at nothing. Absolutely destroy their opponent. You gotta wonder if either one of these guys are gonna make a full reaction after this one. <laughs> Vertigo looking for some more weaponry underneath the ring. Some encouragement from the fans. Uh oh! The table makes its way into the ring. Matt Vertigo with cruel intentions. KTB loosened that bottom rope to get a table into the ring. But it looks like it's Vertigo that's uh, gonna be the one taking advantage of it. But what started as a vertigo chant is now just a table chant. Oh, well, you know, the table's a fan favorite. It's a classic. Always breaks its back for the fans, you know. That's like what that was like. Vertigo setting up the table in the corner. ATB still trying to get up to his feet. Vertigo sending KTB into the... No! Stopped himself. Back elbow to Vertigo from the Beast. Oh! Vertigo tries to get KTB up. Vertigo may have lost his footing there. It may cost him. And a second time. This time he's got him up. Vertigo's got KTB up in a fireman's carry. Just sends him straight down practically through the apron. 
It's like a no. vari variation of the wasteland that KTB usually uses. Maybe Virgo sent a little message. But somehow still only a two count. Vertigo trying to catch his breath here. Another table chant. It hasn't been broken yet. These fans will not be satisfied until it is. Oh, Vertigo going for that pump kick to the back of KTB's head. Spine Buster into the single leg, leg grab. Boston. KTB has put away many, many opponents this way. Way, way more than his power would have you believe. KTB finishing numerous opponents with a submission maneuver. This single leg grab. Vertigo's got nowhere to go to break up this pin. Or break up this submission, rather. Vertigo finally able to roll out of it, trying to, some up kicks into the face of KTB. Into the pinball cradle. Two. KTB right there with a the boot to the head of Vertigo. Vertigo's been doing that a little bit this match. He's been taking a few extra seconds to catch his breath to plan out his next move. I think KTB had that plan. You saw KTB didn't even look behind him. Just knew where Vertigo would be catching his breath. Turn around and deliver that shot to the New York Drip. KTB's been around this business for a long time. He's been a long, long first-round match. KTB dragging an object around the ring. I can't see from our vantage point here. Oh, it, it, it's a street a sign. sign. The street sign coming into play. I mean, signs isn't really chant worthy, but I'm sure the crowd here at ringside is enjoying this. Well, do you want to go to KTB, Dover or do you want to go to Newark? KTB stealing signs. Aaron Judge would be proud. Oh, Vertigo just kicking the road sign into, into the KTB. face. And now going for the pinfall with the sign atop KTB. Still no. KTB able to somehow shimmy that shoulder out from under the street sign. You know what the scariest part of this whole thing? Someone's going to be driving in Newark later and, not, and getting lost because they can't find the sign. You're going to end up in Dover. Worse yet, someone looking to go to Dover is going to end up in Newark. Yeah, yeah that's not where he wants to be. In the corner, Vertigo just throwing the turnbuckle onto KTB. Oh, Vertigo just standing on the hand of KTB. Trying to get that sign away from him. KTB looks like he was trying to use that sign against Vertigo. Vertigo is lining up the king of the barons. What does the New York Drip have in store? Oh, is he lining him up for another pump kick? Oh, wait, no. Hot now on the shoulders. Oh, oh. Oh. Bending the street side in half and bending Vertigo in half. No, no, Vertigo kicks out. I don't know how he kicked out. That I don't know why he kicked out. out. Just when I thought the New York Drip was done for, he kicks out at two. KTB, not done yet. Setting up the table. Vertigo still trying to trying to figure out where he is. The supports are in place. This table is set up in the middle of the ring. Vertigo trying to fight off KTB, but he's just got nothing left in the tank. The Beast setting up Vertigo on the top turnbuckle. Oh, oh, huge chuck. That takes care of any comeback that Vertigo had in mind. Another shot to the side of the head from KTB. Vertigo in a bad way right Wait a now. Minute. Gentlemen, have we seen this at Crossroads? It looks very familiar. KTB with Vertigo up on his shoulders. Vertigo able to escape out the back door. Oh no! Oh 
Oh, it's Mike Buster! The trip drop! 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 The The trip drop! 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 The trip a competitor for event of the year. And this is only the first half. Matt Vertigo doing everything he could to pull that match out. Didn't even get enough, didn't even get all of the drip drop. It's still yeah. enough to put him to that table. And I hate to say this, I don't like to agree with JC, but you're 100% right. Yeah. I was thinking the same thing. Match of the year contender. Matt Vertigo finally claiming a decisive victory over the King of the Barons, KTB. I mean, it, it's a victory at this point that Vertigo is just gonna be able to walk out of this building under his own power. UWA Elite fans, coming up in just a few minutes, we have Lucas Finnegan in the ring. If you would like to see once again how Lucas Finnegan was forced to relinquish his Iron Man Championship title. And stay tuned, we have got the UWA Elite Rewind coming your way from aggression. Matt Vertigo finally able to put down the beast. Let's take a look right now at your UWA Elite Rewind. Since November, I have held this Iron Man Championship and uh, it was very hard for us to get to the place that I'm at right now, but however, uh, under doctor's orders, uh, I have to now relinquish the Ironman Championship. I have been dealing with a back issue. I have been losing feeling in my hands, uh, and that's something that I cannot just push through. And if I get to come back, I will come back stronger than ever. You get to guaranteed see a brand new Iron Man champion today. The FAFO from Robbie Roller, there it is oh, for all future opponents. Sean Damage McNell oh. sending Roller into the into the uh, ring post. Could this be? One, two, and three. Oh. No. oh my goodness. Way. Oh. Lucas, you got your wish. Well, the man that you have beaten for that very championship is now your Iron Man champion once again. The man who sold the world, Sean Damage McNellis, is going to be taking that Iron Man championship belt as Lucas Finnegan leaves the commentary Thank position. God. Lucas Finnegan offering his hand, looking for a handshake from the new Iron Man champion, Sean Damage McNellis. There's, there's a lot going on right now. Look at Ty Tommy. Thomas, Ty Thomas. As Lucas, wait, Sean Damage McNellis, is, is he really shaking his hand? And meanwhile, Robbie Roller staring daggers at both of them. Robbie Roller had that match won. Roller looking to become the three-time Ironman champion, blaming Sean Damage McNellis for costing him the title. It looks like that exact thing has happened again. History has repeated itself. I know what I did last year, and I know it wasn't necessarily the honorable thing to do, but this year, I'm going to do my best to hey, honor this championship. You know, and I know that the way I've been talking to you and, and reacting has been, you know, aggressive, I'll say. And I just really want you to know that there's a reason for it, all right? It's awful! All right, what's going to happen? We're going to wrestle. Whether it's for that championship or not, I don't really care. But I want to hurt you. Agree? Are we good? Is that what's going to happen? Yes! Okay! Alright, Sean. Bye! Okay.
hear your voice as I don't talk that much. Uh, as some of you have seen the video online, uh, I'm currently injured. Um, I have a back injury uh, that has been causing me to lose feeling in my hands. Uh, sometimes I wake up but I can't feel my legs. Oof. As a musician, you think the mic would work. Um, so, uh, I came out of here without the kill tone to show you that this is real life. This is really something I'm going through. Uh, and it, it, there's no other word, it, uh, it sucks. So, um, I had to forfeit my Iron Man Championship at Mega Fight. And there's somebody that won the Iron Man Championship at Mega Fight, somebody that I didn't think would win it. And uh, I'd like to bring him out right now because I have a lot to say to him. The new Iron Man Champion, Sean Damage McNellis. Finnegan and Sean Damage McNellis respect being shown 
just going to start off by saying we all know that I've got anger issues. And, uh, you know, it may have gotten the best of me. I make a fight. One thing I'm going to do right now is I'm going to take this off. I mean, I don't even. That thing doesn't work, so I'm just going to talk really loud. I am not proud of what I did to you after the match. And I'm going to tell you now. If I'm going to beat you for that title, it's going to be fair and square. Yes! Oh! That's a deal. That's a deal. So, let's get down to business and let's keep it official. And we'll see what happens. McNellis, which is not something we're used to seeing from him. Robbie Roller promising a fair fight as well. So we're going to see here two, it's, yeah, two wrestlers who are always flirting with the rule book going one-on-one. -on -one. Both men also are former UWA Elite Champions. Yeah, Sean Damage McNellis, the, uh, the Ironman Champion, despite that being his first win of the season. When he's got it, he's on the belt. Sometimes that's all you need is one. Yeah, a loss in the golden ticket ladder match, a loss in the cell block six. As a matter of fact, the cell block six match, he was the first man eliminated, and he was eliminated by the man across the ring from him, Robbie Roller. You know what? I saw that on the uh, hard run down. Who's that tool that we got to, to do that? Am I, am, am I actually going to have to take my mask off? I mean, I wouldn't come out dressed as the hair runner. They say people who wear masks can't be trusted. He's not the hamburger, he's the drug pirate robber. See? Someone get, Thank you, Lucas. Someone finally gets it. You don't know what the Princess Bride is. If I hear Zara one more time tonight. Well, it's Zora, but you can't say Zara. Yeah, sorry about that. Well, that's just the New Jersey accent. I can't really do too much about that. 
This is uh, Sean Damage McNellis' first championship since 2016, and I'd say first official championship, as you remember last season. He was a self-proclaimed Iron Man champion. I mean, he, he did go back on that and, and say in his in his promo a little bit before this uh, before this event took place that he is aware, he acknowledges that he was not actually a real champion at all last year until he won that championship match. Sometimes you just... How damage got his move back? Well, I think in the eyes of the unit, he might have a little bit more work to play to regain their trust, but we'll see how he goes. Kick right to the back, it's a to redemption. Some very, very measured offense from both of these wrestlers early on. No one's going for the big moves. No one's going for anything high risk. It's all been, you know, a lot of takeovers, a lot of kicks. Nothing that can get you in too much trouble if it gets, if it goes wrong. They got to know each other really, really well after a mega fight when Robbie Roller attacked Sean Damage McNellis with that chain backstage. Nearly choking the man out, forcing him to accept this challenge, accept this match. He has anger issues. He's a guy who ha also has anger issues. I can attest to what Robbie Roller's talking about. Sometimes you just, you know, you can't control it. Well, we've seen many times the man's temper gets the better of him. Cost him gold. Hopefully that doesn't happen here for Robbie Roller. Focused on Sean Damage McNellis. Just a one count. <laughs> in the corner, met with a chop. Not, not missing the ring right now, are you, Lucas? <laughs> oh, Roller getting that big boot up. I'll tell you what, I sit here every show and every time I see stuff like that, I'm like, thank God. Oh. Punch right to the bread basket from Sean Diamond from Pella Center Drop. Roller head over heels. Another right hand attempted by Roller. Damage is lengthening that arm by about an inch and a half. Big fall away slam for damage. Still though, still the measured offense. So very, very methodical. Well, these two guys have been around a long time. It's almost kind of like a, like a prolonged feeling out process. No one wants to be the first guy to make the big move because if you miss, it could cost you. Right hands there. Misses on the third. Let's Robbie Roller down. The big Sambo suplex. Oh, I thought that was it. Just one second away from retaining his championship. Looks like Sean Damage with Nelda signaling the end. Damage control coming, maybe? No. Oh, big super kick. Caught him right underneath the chin. That was my exact And Bobby Roller getting some water. Taking his time. Being smart. Gotta stay hydrated. 
Oh, yeah, that part. Yeah. Good point. Got a chance to win the title. Damage. Yeah, damage looking a little bit better, but uh, neither one of them looking too good right now. Damage fighting his way out of it, a few elbows. Fighting through the elbows. The roll through, the roll through. Will be Rinfall, two, and he retains! Very, very technical matchup between two very skilled technical competitors in Sean Damage McNellis and Robbie Roller. But at the end of the day, that little explosion of offense, that little reversal from SDM means that Damage is still your UWA Elite Ironman Champion. UWA Elite is going to be returning here to South River, New Jersey on June 17th with aggression. Tickets are on sale right now at UWAElite.com. F-A-F-O from Robbie Roller. You going for a second one, it looks like, yeah. Oh, onto the belt. Right on top of the Iron Man Championship. Well, the hunter never lets his prey get away. And oh my goodness. What is that? A huge it's amount. A chain. It's a chain link. Robbie Roller going to the well again. It's the thing that got him this match. We're gonna finish it the way that it started, I think. Oh, Ref Ryan T. Uh, oh, no, no, oh, tightening the chain link around his neck. I mean, we're ringing, we're ringing, ring the bell as many times as we want. It's not gonna change what Robbie Roller's doing. Ref Ryan T. Getting in there. Trying to break this up, and Roller just shoving him aside. The Hunter has come unhinged. Wait, look at Finnegan just left the commentator table. Looks like Finnegan going to, to maybe assist damage, or at least distract Roller, trying to get him out of the ring. Chain fight from Robbie Roller, a matchup that he has never lost. Roller with some bad intentions for Sean Damage McNellis. Damage. Hopefully he can get himself right before we come up to aggression. Once again, tickets are on sale right now for aggression. Coming your way June the 17th. Get your tickets at uwaelite.com right now. Oh, what? Oh, well. Uh, crowd here is 
I'm not happy about that. If you don't have somebody clear you, you cannot compete. That's Oh wait, Flash! 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 Back in the ring! He wasn't gonna walk in here! He, it was that was a triple threat! Wait, wait, what is going on? Oh, yeah. The man! The Flash Drive! Oh, flash Drive in the center of the ring! This might be it! And he's done it! Tried to put him to sleep. But Flash Texas can't get out. Clover. Flash is stuck. And he's That's tapped. It. He tapped. He tapped. Flash Carter on the losing end in this match. Oh, but Flash Carter catches him. And a rainbow cutter. Rainbow cutter. That ought to do it. One. Two, three! I have no doubt in my mind that you will hold this title one day. But as long as I am the ice champion, that is not going to happen. Just me and you. And next Monday, Gold Rush, the better man is going to walk away. I champion. And that better man. Evans coming from behind Flash Carter, a blow to the middle of the back, sending Carter. Oh wait! Oh, Explosive Eddie, Eddie Thomas in the ring once more, blind signing the anti-hero. I mean, he had it coming. Double reversal, Evans and Thomas, a meeting of the minds, and then both getting dumped out in the ringside. Carter just super kicked Jay the Key Evans out of the ring. Wait a minute, is Flash going for a no leaf clover as well? Flash Carter with a half crab. And he's tapping! And just like that, a title opportunity taken away from Jay the Key Evans and explosive Eddie Thomas Cypress. At Gold Rush, make sure you are following all of our social media at UWA Elite to keep up on all of the UWA Elite action and join up for the network at UWAElite.com, $6.99 a month. And all new subscribers get your first week free. Sign up right now at UWAElite.com. I just want to say thank you so much for having my back tonight. We finally got rid of those two goons, and now we can focus on what's important. We're going to find out if your eye championship material. And next month, I expect you to give it your all. I expect scars way worse than this. But I also expect at the end of the night, the better man comes out eye champion. Don't worry, I will. <laughs>
here at the commentary table, I uh, would like to introduce our guest at this time. Do we have to? Number one contender to the I Championship, the fresh off of his treasure chest turmoil victory, the Matt Mechanic, Eric Holmes. MC Hell. Yeah. Shut up. JC, shut up. Cypress is so nice to see you. I know. I know. First of all, Eric, you might want to sanitize those earbuds some no good dirty Irishman had him in his ears before. Hey, I'm sitting Lucas right Finnegan here. Oh, 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 Lucas Finnegan, sorry. I have never been so happy to have somebody out of the UWA in the locker room as Lucas Finnegan, but I can't say that I'm much happier that SDN is the Irishman. Like, like JC said, I won the championship to my own today. I'm next in line for the championship, so why would I come out here and join you? Get my first bit of scouting so I can prepare for the match at progression on June 17th. And I, I'll be honest with you. I think I want the can they both lose and they could just give the title to me? I think that would be the benefits. We've, we've certainly had some some interesting rules, uh, some interesting rulings on the UWA League Championship rules tonight. I don't think that's going to be one of them. I think it's a viable option. If Flash is in there with somebody, he gets one of the loudest reactions in UWA. When Joey's in the ring with somebody, he gets one of the loudest reactions. But when you put them in there together, the crowd is literally split 50-50. It's absolutely insane. Incredible moment. The crowd is split, and Joey Adams catching Flash Carter. Oh, Tilt-A-Whirl goes wrong. And drop kick to follow. Another for good measure. Joey Adams rolling to ringside. Yeah, I gotta say, this crowd is so loud right now. I'm having trouble hearing you guys. Yeah, we're wearing we're wearing headsets and we're still having difficulty hearing each other. Oh, oh vicious kick to the jaw. Nearly knocked the face paint right off of him and a crossbody to the floor. Well, this is what I came out with my notebook. I know you avoid that specific kick because that looked gross. I'm not even sure Joey Adams has face paint on him. Adams now rolled back into the ring. Last quarter. The arm drag there. Kick to the knee. And the other. And Zaguri attempted by Flash Carter. And a double stomp onto the lower back. So I don't know if you guys are aware, but today is my 22 year anniversary in pro wrestling. And as such an esteemed veteran as I am, I'm just I'm feeling a little bit of in Flash Carter today. I feel there wasn't, there wasn't a lot behind that arm drag. It seemed like he might be second guessing himself a little bit in this high pressure situation. And dealing with high pressure situations is something that comes with experience. 
which Joey Adams has so much more than in this particular is, is that your prediction? Is, is the anti-hero going to be retaining tonight? You can't make a prediction in a two out of three fall. Both of these men have to win twice in order to walk away with the election. That throws every game plan that you have as a professional wrestler way out the window. So, like, in MC Hale, JC, you guys have no idea about this. Me and Cypress understand what it's like to have to prepare for big matches. Two out of three points, completely different ballgame when it comes to preparation. Yeah, you gotta up your cardio, you gotta strategize a certain way. It's not just one match. It, 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 it could be three matches, could be two matches. Well, despite the uh, difference in experience, Class Carter was expecting the fight of a lifetime. So far, and so in the last bar, a Russian leg sweep and a chop to the chest. Adam's Class holding Carter. on to that a little bit, a little bit extra, a little extra torque on that Russian leg sweep. Class Carter talked of the battle scars he faced when teaming with Joey Adams back at Mega Fight, and he's expecting even more battle scars in this two out of three falls match. That's the thing too. I may not have been. Oh! oh. 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 And I think that might actually go against Flash Carter. Flash Carter is such um, high, high impact, such speed, such agility, and he may have to slow himself down, or he may lose out all that energy early on. And a double stomp to the abdomen, going for the pitfall. It's all part of what we talked about before, upping your cardio, pacing yourself. And Flash, right now, he's not pacing himself. And it has brought Flash all of the success that he's seen so far, that high impact, high energy offense that he has. Joey Adams with the fireman's carry and plants Flash Carter's face right onto his knee and then sends him for a ride through the middle ropes. Joey Adams on the referee Ryan to count him out. That's a good way to get a fall. You don't have to expend any energy and you still get that 1-0 lead. That's the veteran experience that we're talking about with Joey Adams. Joey Adams also has multiple ways that he can put you down. We've seen Joey Adams put down countless opponents with the no leaves clover, but we've also seen him put down countless opponents with that spin out slam that he does. Flash Carter is going to have a harder time because he doesn't have as many ways to put somebody down as the anti Leg drop from the pinfall, still only two. I don't know, Corvus. That, that, that flash splash looks awfully similar to the frog splash that you've used a few times in the past. Yes, you think? He also weighs like 140 pounds. That's why I don't even do it off the top rope. I do that in the second row because I don't even need to do it off the top rope. It's not because you've lost the step, it's, it's strategy, is what you're saying. You're looking like three people away from you now. I'm just else, saying strategy. Has anybody else given McNeil compliments wearing a mask tonight? Because it's definitely improved his face. I can definitely see the similarities. Wait, the wait a second. I knew, your, I knew your name was McHale. That, that settles it. That's my point. Double axe handle to the chest and the back elbow. So much hate. Right off of his shoulder. That's it. There's that spinning slam that Corvus just alluded to a oh, minute ago. Oh, that that, was that a is a tap. quick, quick tap out by Flash Carter. 
I mean, uh, Cypress, I, I normally ask you about, you know, wrestling strategy, but I guess I have to include Corvus on this also. Is that strategy from Flash Carter to tap out that quickly and save yourself some energy? I mean, I, I, I guess it's kind of like surrendering the run for the double play. But okay. I, 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 don't know. I, I never want to give up a fall that easy. Because, I mean, as, as devastating a maneuver, as, as devastating a, a, a submission as the no-leaf clover is, we've seen people hang in, hang in there quite a while before tapping, and Flash went right for it. But why? Why sit in the hole for what could be minutes and still end up having to tap out? Flash Carter knows exactly what it's like to be in the no leaf He's seen countless people lose to the no-leaf clover. In that moment, that's a veteran move. I'll give it to the kid. It's a veteran move. Why put yourself in a position where you can do long-term damage in a match where there are still two fights to do? That's going right in my notebook. Because a flash wins, maybe a submission is not the way to go. You lose the battle to win the war. Flash forward with a kick to the gut. Springboard flash drive. Flash Carter with the cover. One, two, no. Joey Adams able to kick out at two. And that was an elevated flash drive. How many people have we seen flash defeat with just a regular flash drive since he's been here? Nice opponents. And then look, look at Flash right there. He's not limping. Wanna know why? Because he didn't sit in the no-leave clover for 10 minutes. And if while you're making that point, I wrote, watch elevated flash drive for the notes for you. Thank you, I appreciate it. Sectors always has to go, my God. Big super kick from Flash Carter. Sized up the anti-hero and got him on point. Going for another no. The Enziguri from Joey Adams putting him down into another no-leaf clover. He's fighting for it. Flash is trying to throw his momentum in either direction to try and fight his way out. Flash Carter finally able to shove Adams out and into a roll-up. One, two, three! Oh, Flash Carter with the cradle pinfall! Both men have one fall apiece. The next person to get a fall is I Champion. Sudden death for the I Championship. And it wasn't a flash drive or a frog splash. It was a small package. Joey Adams did not have that scouted. The bell sounds, and here we go. Fall number three is coming. STO from Flash Carter. Showing his technical ability. Is he going to make the man who was voted best finisher tap out to his own submission? Submission wrestling is not Flash Carter's strong suit. It's just something he's trying to bring to the table and take Joey Adams off his game. But when it comes to submission wrestling, nobody does it better in UWA Elite than Joey Adams. He proved that against Eddie Thomas. Sorry, Cypress. We don't talk about that, but I'll give you a pass. Now Joey Adams conflicted on what his next move will be. How will he get this next ball if he did? And listen to the crowd here chanting for Joey Adams against the man who has won back-to-back -back most popular wrestler, Flash Carter. Adams doesn't realize that he will soon. Carter oh! from off the top rope delivers a vicious knee. Northern Lights suplex from Flash Carter. One, two, no. Almost a new eye champion. Flash is pulling out moves I, I haven't seen him use. And I also notice he's taking his time now. He's not rushing anymore. He's picking his spots, and that's why he's doing so much better than he was earlier in this match. Now Carter taking the anti-hero to the turnbuckle. Reversing the Irish whip is Carter. Flash able to get that boot up into the chin. Look. That destroyer, that body drop driver oh. by the anti hero. <laughs> How did Flash kick out? I haven't seen Joey Adams do that move 
in like four years at this point. He is digging deep into his bag of tricks. And the fact that Flash Carter kicked out of that says a lot about that kid. Even I have to admit it. Both men pulling out all of the stops. The I Championship belt on the line. A date with Eric Corvus at Aggression. Speaking of aggression, a little bit coming out of Joey Adams right now. Maybe a little frustration. How could you not be frustrated? This kid that Joey Adams is fully convinced that he's better at, better than, is, is kicking out of everything Joey Adams is bringing to the table. Some shots to the midsection. I wonder if Joey Adams is going to fall back into that brawling style that we've seen from him as his frustration oh, grows. Wait, rainbow Cutter! Rainbow Cutter out of nowhere! One, two! Oh, again, so close for the young Flash Carter! And now it's Carter's turn to be frustrated. To question what he has to do to put away his opponent. Did you just say flash Because that's great. Um, yes. Don't try to take credit for something you did accidentally. Like, who are you? That's half my career. Can you just wear a mask every show, please? You know, Joey Adams back on the street, walking in that, but sent to the second row. 619! 619! He caught it! Out. Adams caught it! That's it! No Leaf Clover! This yeah. match is over! No Leaf Clover part two! It's locked in! Middle of the ring, there's nowhere for Flash Carter to go. Desperately trying to crawl toward that bottom rope. This tap kick. See, earlier today he tapped out right away, but he has no choice now. If he taps, this match is over. Small package again from Flash Carter. One, two, no. Not able to get it the second time. Flash Carter, the man known for the explosive offense, is going to have a lot more trouble getting his wind back, getting some oxygen into those lungs, now that his throat has been crushed. What's great about this for me, though, is I really didn't take much punishment in the treasure chest turmoil. I'm watching these dudes beat each other to a pulp, and no way either of them is coming through aggression 100% after a match like this. Might as well just gift, gift wrap that out championship and hand it to me, brother. I don't know, only four weeks of recovery time between now and then. You mean to tell me that the fight you've seen from both men thus far doesn't worry you in the slightest, though, Corbis? Do I look like a man that worries about competition, JC? Come on, I'm a Hall of Famer. I'm a Grand Slam I mean, we... Cypress knows what it's like to be a Hall of Famer. We don't worry. We don't have to worry. The only thing I worry about is being next to you guys. Every splash! Time. Splash! This could be it, one! one. Two. New champ, no! Oh my goodness, how? Just how did he kick out of the flash flash? Carter beside himself. Just, just begging with Ryan T. What else does Flash Carter have as a young ref? We have literally seen him do every move that he has. He has nothing left. And Flash Carter doesn't usually have another speed. He is full out 100%, 100% of the time. Flash Carter yelling at Joey Adams, why won't you stay down? Adams, that shot. Adams dragging Flash to his feet. Both men just exchanging right hands in the middle of the ring. It's just a slugfest, and that 100% favors the anti-hero. Oh wait, Rainbow, Rainbow Cutter. Cutter! Rainbow Cutter once more! That could be it! Two! New Eye Champion! New Eye Champion! Joey Adams just snatching the belt away from Ref Ryan T before he can present it to Flash Carter. 
there are literally members of the UWA Elite Army in the, in the crowd crying right now. And I don't know whether they're crying because Joey lost or crying because Flash won. They may be crying because of the beautiful spectacle that they just witnessed. We mentioned before, KTB and Matt Vertigo, possible contender for match of the year. I think we may have another one right here. Hit him, Joey. Oh, can I say that right? A show of respect. Both men have for each other. Joey Adams turning down the handshake, demanding a hug from the new I champion, Flash Carter. Folks, we have got one more match coming your way tonight. It is for the UWA Elite Championship. BT Bull defending against Corey Dillinger. Corey Dillinger winning his way into the match through the Cell Block 6 match. Let's take a look at it right now. This is your UWA Elite Rewind. Everyone sees it, but flat. Eric Corvus leaving his spot here at commentary to face off against his opponent at aggression. The Matt Mechanic against the new I champion. Get your tickets at UWAElite.com right now. Aggression, it is coming your way June the 17th. Sarcastic congratulations from the Matt Mechanic. Once again, here is your UWA Elite Rewind. Be sure to follow UWA Elite on social media to keep yourself updated on everything UWA Elite. Want to be a member of the UWA Elite Army? You can follow UWA Elite on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok today so you don't miss out on any of the latest UWA Elite news and announcements. The final mystery opponents. No! Oh no! Cor Corvus just rammed his head right through the steel chair! Looks like it's time, boys! D Elbow! Oh, you're looking for the roughneck. Oh, on the chair! It. That could be it! One, two! Corey Dillinger has won the South Block Six! Look in the briefcase shot and delivers a shot of his own. Ty Thomas is the one that cost Corey Dillinger the, the title at uh, last Oh, the BT Bull the champ right here. behind him. Corey Dillinger lining, getting lined up for BT Bull with that championship belt. Dillinger. Sidewalk slam. Oh! The most diligent man in professional wrestling, Corey Dillinger. Rough oh. neck. Sent BT Bull out of his shoes. Legit out of his shoes. And now Dillinger has both the Golden Ticket Briefcase and the UWA Elite Championship. Could this be what we see next month?
our home one fall. And for the huge WA Elite Championship, our referee in charge for the final time tonight will be Brian T. Introducing first, the challenger, wrestling out of Irvington, New Jersey. He is the most intelligent man in the world, Corey Dillinger. again, conspicuous in his absence at ringside is Ty Thomas, the man who lost his Golden Ticket briefcase match earlier this evening. Well, he, well, he lost the match. He, he did. He kept but, the briefcase, but he lost the match. Oh, Dillinger! To answer your question, he did come out, and BT Bull looked at him and said, I got this. I can confirm it. Oh. BT the, Bull could do it on his own. The avalanche by Corey Dillinger to the outside. There are not too many people whose chest would not be caved in from that. That's just the the size and strength of BT Bull. Oh! Mayhem broke in his hand, slapping the steel post instead of Corey Dillinger. Dillinger with the strategic dodge. Now taking BT Bull back into the ring. Nicholas K and may not be able to do so anymore as BT Bull is winking at the eyes. Oh, leg drop from BT Bull while Dillinger's hung up on that second rope and now a pinfall by BT Bull. The champ only gets a one count. Well, Dillinger took his eye off the prize there and was distracted by Nicholas K. He's got to focus on BT Bull, not Nicholas K. I don't even know why he'd be distracted by him. He doesn't ever get involved. Nicholas K doesn't ever. Is, are you new here? Bull putting the boots to Dillinger. <laughs> Ref Ryan T kind of forcing DT Bull away. Bull with the head of steam. Oh, shot to the kidneys of Dillinger. That big chop. Letting up the chest. Take him to another corner. Tried bashing his head into the turnbuckle, but Dylan just stopped it. Another shot.
shot right there in the abdomen. And then across the back. Ball working over the midsection of Dillinger early. Dillinger was trying to show respect to the academy that he went to training for. And Bull just raking the eyes. As you said before, Bull, Bull attacking the eyes of Dillinger. It's, it's his second time now. So maybe that is a strategy that Nicholas K has, uh, has imparted unto his protege. Well, you know what they say, a man can't see. That, 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 yes, that is what they say. Sometimes a man can't see. Yeah, that, well, I, thought you, I, thought you were gonna, I thought you were going to finish it, but you didn't. <laughs> In the corner once more. BT Bull. Oh wait, reversing the iron sweep is Dillinger. Misses ball in the corner. Big head of steam. Dillinger hit that hit that turnbuckle heavy. Side slam by Bull. One, two. It's gonna take a lot more than that, I think, to uh, to dash the championship hopes of the diligent one. Oh, looks like he's choking out Dillinger. I'm gonna think a little like what Corey Dillinger has built up inside the BT Bowl. He at one point had three titles. He had the, the title for the Diamond Three, the Diamond Championship, and the UWA League Championship. And he lost all of them. And one fell sweet. Indeed, he did. The BT Bowl taking advantage. And I mean, Bull has has mentioned that he let Vertigo keep that title while he had the Golden Ticket for each case. Was, was that actually any, in any way reality? Do you think BT Bull was biding his time and saw a week in Dillinger and decided to make I his play? I think after that, Matt, I think because you only have a year to cash in, I think the time was starting to run out. I think BT Bull he knew that those two guys were going to take a lot out of each other. I think he was watching the close. I think even if Vertigo came out on top, I think he knew he was going to this this was my this is my best opportunity. I better go after it now while I still have the chance. Yes. That does sound uh, very opportunistic and very much the way that Nicholas K operates, and therefore very much the way that BT Bull operates. Escaping the hold from BT Bull's Dillinger, Dillinger right hand, the slow clothesline, and again a tribute to a wrestling legend and an academy that he gets trained at. Cut short though by BT Bull. Dillinger changing directions and then delivering a huge clothesline. Sending Bull off of his feet. Not an easy thing to do. Yeah, BT Bull is out of it for the moment. Yeah, Bull got, he got spun around and then finally just came to his senses in time to catch that clothesline. Will he land it this time? <laughs> Tricked him with the bionic elbow. And Dillinger going downstairs. Bull sends him into the corner. The champ with the head of steam, but Dillinger able to get that big boot up. The double axe handle off of the middle turnbuckle from Dillinger. One, two, no, not quite. Nearly had him though. And if you thought uh, if you thought the crowd was going crazy after the last match, they would have exploded for Corey Dillinger taking the championship belt away from BT Bull. Sizing up BT Bull. He's going in a bad way right now. I hope Ty Thomas is close by. It is a long time since we have seen BT Bull in this much trouble in a match. I think. Well, Dillinger. so much for that. He's trying not to let go, but was met with the knee to the sternum. They're telling Dillinger, you are nothing. Slapped him right across the face. Whoa! Cut and planted! Corey Dillinger! The horns of the BT Bull Mask nearly scraping the rafters here at the, at the VFW. Bull may have awoken an angry, angry man. Just delivering shots to the chest of BT Bull. Nicholas K demanding that Ref Ryan T step into these closed fists, but I think he's hitting with forearms. Yeah, unfortunately for Nicholas K, 
Everything's perfectly illegal. You can see a nervous look on the face of Nicholas K. It looks like Dillinger looking maybe for a camel clutch from, from BT Bull. No, he's just raking at the face. No turnabout's fair play. He might be trying to gouge BT Bull's eyes out a little bit. Looks like he's going after the mask of BT Bull. Might have ripped a little bit of it. Well, you remember Bull went after the eyes of Dillinger earlier. I think uh, Dillinger wants to get some revenge. Dillinger going after it again. Maybe looking for a sleeper here. Oh, oh. no! Oh, referee Ryan T! That'll never get old. Took most of the damage in that attack. BT Bull able to break the uh, able to break that submission hold, able to break the choke. And now Dillinger checking on our official. Oh no! And right on cue. Right on cue. The insurance policy is in ring. Oh wait, there's Vertigo! Vertigo! Coming to his defense! Man, Vertigo taking out Ty Thomas. Right in front of the commentary table. Vertigo sending Ty Thomas scurrying back to the locker room. Wait, wait, wait. Nicholas K behind Dillinger. Oh, what a cheap no. shot. Wait, wait. Dillinger smiling as if he's not affected by these strikes. Nicholas K getting rid of the jacket. I it's been a while since Nicholas K's been an active wrestler. His shots may, may, might not hold the same uh, as, as they used to. Trying to weasel his way out of it. Oh. The rough neck from Dillinger on to Nicholas K. I hope you got some medics in the back. We need medical attention for Nicholas K. Oh, look that. Look behind you, Dillinger. BT Bull with a loaded right hand. And the belt. Oh. The belt right to the dome of Corey Dillinger, the challenger. BT Bull wakes up Ryan T. And here we go again. It's not the way you want to see a championship match end. I agree with you. Nicholas K, the poor guy, I think we need to check on him. BT Bull using the interference of Ty Thomas, the interference of Nicholas K. Once again, Nicholas K Associates getting their man the victory. He is still your UWA Elite Champion, BT Bull. UWA Elite fans, don't forget, we have got aggression coming your way next month. It is Saturday, June 17th from the UWA Elite Army Base in South River, New Jersey at the South River VFW. Doors open at 6 p.m. Bell time is at 6.30. We have got an I Championship match. The stakes have never been higher at aggression. For the UWA Elite Hall of Famer Cypress, for JC, Reverend James, Shannon May, Rich Reed, President Dave Swan, and all of us here at UWA Elite, this is the Man of a Thousand Spreadsheets, MC Hale, saying we will see you at Ringside.